So hopefully you now place that in one of the four areas of pain. The area that, you know, we really were having to identify a trigger, right? What, what situations trigger you? So um, we also want to talk about the thought, right? So we have a trigger. So somebody at work could say something to me like just horrible, right? And not even really, maybe they don't even realize they're horrible. You know, sometimes people will make a comment, an offhanded comment about a woman can't do this or women aren't good at this. And that could be a trigger to me. Like that's rather offensive, right? Rather misogynist to, for you to say. Um, so that's a trigger. So I have to identify that. And then that's, what does that go to? Well, you know, for me, that might actually go to love because maybe I don't fully love myself as a woman in totality. So when someone has a disparaging thought or, you know, whatever about women, then I get triggered by that because maybe I've been told that all my life. So the, now we are, we're aware of the triggers. We're kind of aware of the area of pain. I want to talk a little about being aware of the thought because I don't think enough we're truly aware of the difference. You've made a comment about the mind being your, our ally, our greatest ally, and sometimes our greatest enemy, yeah. you know, right? Because our mind is designed to protect us. That's really what it is. I call it on my channel a fantastic recorder. It, it's a DVR recorder, whatever, SoundCloud, whatever, iCloud, you want to say it's the best one made third dimensionally. It will record everything. And then when we get in a situation, play it back. But that might not be our true self. So you want to talk a little bit about maybe the difference between thought and true self? Sure. Perfect. That's, that's actually really good. So the way that I, I set it up for myself and the way that I set it up for people that I, I assist is I tell them this. And I want you guys to actually do this for me right now. I want you to be completely silent. Okay? Be completely silent and free of everything. Observe whatever comes up from the mind. Now, observe the dialogue that the mind now has. How does it sound? How does it feel? You'll know that it is the mind or the ego speaking when it is not just not making you feel good, but also when it, it is in direct conflict with what you really want or how you would like to feel about yourself. So for example, today, perfect example, I'm going through my own issues at this moment. The dialogue of the mind, the ego is, you're not good enough. Who are you kidding? But the higher self says, be patient. And it's a softer voice. So it's almost like you have to cut through the noise of the mind. Does that make sense, guys? When you cut through the noise of the mind, the, the chatter, and you actually start to get a little bit deeper, right? So if you can bring your awareness into how you feel, right? And if you can bring your awareness from here, back into here and if you can listen closely enough to that little voice that's like very soft that's the higher self and then that's the mind and that took me a long time to understand because i would be like so confused some days like i have these two things or dialogues going on in here or i think in here and I don't know exactly how to discern, but then after, after a while, I started to get very clear on it. It's like, okay, wait, wait a second. That's the ego. That's the ego telling me that I'm not good enough. And then this is this true self saying, no, you're a badass. You can do it. Yeah. You just got to be patient and just yeah. chill, you know? Yeah, yes, definitely. And, and that sitting in that silence is, uh, it is priceless. To learn to sit in silence and to learn to hear the small, still voice. Um, those of you that um, are, very, are familiar with um, biblical text, there is a passage. 
in the Bible where um, God is speaking to Elijah, I believe. And he was looking for like to hear from God. And he was like waiting for this huge storm, like this huge storm passed. He still didn't hear anything. These winds passed. He still didn't hear anything. Like all these great calamities happened and he still heard nothing. He's like, God, where you at? And God says, basically paraphrasing, of course, that, listen, I wasn't in the storm. I wasn't in the wind. I wasn't in the earthquake. I was in that small, still voice. Hmm. It's in the stillness, in the peacefulness, nothing missing, nothing broken. It's in the peacefulness that we find our true selves. Everything else that's been programmed into this grand computer, iCloud, DVR, whatever, everything else is surface noise. It's interference from hearing what's really going on and what your true self wants. It's the narrative we've been given. And this, how to fix your life, really probably should be called how to find your life because it's all what someone else has told us our lives right now they need fixing because they're not what was originally given to us or what we were meant to be from a divine standpoint so how to fix your life really is how to find your life which is extremely empowering um so yes so dev understanding what the thought what's the thought and identifying a thought from your true self is going to become very important as we're doing, as we're clearing and as we're going through the fixing, because you'll need to be able to see the trigger, identify the thought and stop that thought before it really takes root down in your heart. Well, we've done a lot of work today (laughs) already. We've done a ton of work. Um, Gabriel, I think that we should probably, let's let you sit with this for a little bit, guys. Um, really review it. If you haven't had an opportunity to finish, to really identify which area of pain or you want to go through and identify more, feel free. And then in the next video, we're going to start talking about how do we clear and how do we heal um, these areas. Okay. So, um, that's if you'll come back. I'm sure Gabriel will come back to yeah. hang out with us. All right, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Until then, peace, love, blessings, and joy be unto you today, tomorrow, and for all eternity. Namaste. Nice. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching episode two of How to Fix Your Life, the series. Episode three is in the thumbnail right above on this end screen. Also, the link to Gabriel Inspires, his YouTube channel, is there as well with his icon. Please consider checking his channel out where you will discover all about living, discovering, and executing your life purpose. Thank you for liking, subscribing, and sharing this video and others here on Heart of Inspiration. Until next time, namaste. everyone again this is Lisa with Heart of Inspiration here to help you lead a spirit-led whole and healed peaceful and prosperous life and we have my very good friend Gabriel with us again on the channel thank you so much Gabriel for joining us again and we are here to talk about healing you know how to fix your life right but now we're going to talk about healing those issues that are causing um, you to have lead a life that's a little bit less than what you may want. So we want to focus very specifically on a certain area, okay? And a common area that I have come across, I'm sure Gabriel has as well, is this lack of abundance. Like, why am I not financially successful? Why am I living this life of poverty? It seems that I just get on that precipice and boy, something happens. Either I self-sabotage or something happens to us. So we're going to talk a lot about that today. Um, so from my standpoint, I go to the chakras and I look into the chakra healing. Um, Gabriel, I know you kind of approach this from a different perspective. When you're working with people to help them heal certain areas of their, their life, how do you approach it, Gabriel? So the way that I work with my clients is I listen to their cues because sometimes people are not 
aware of what their problem is. They, they think it's, they think it's uh, uh, an experience that happened here, but it was actually an experience that happened here from like 1998. And as I've mentioned in some of my videos, the, the brain, the mind has a very interesting way of capturing data information and retaining that. So in your brain, you have your frontal, parietal, occipital, temporal lobes, right? And within that, you have your pituitary, pineal gland, but underneath that, which is connected to your central nervous system, your spine, you have your limbic system. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning this is because the limbic system is the part of the brain that registers a memory, okay? Now, what happens when the brain registers a memory is that the brain now sends a response to both your CNS, your central nervous system, and your autonomic nervous system, your ANS. So that's responsible for feeling and, and, and how you uh, perceive things, right? The limbic system then, whenever we have a traumatic experience, whenever our, our physical eyes sense something, the vibration or the, uh, the energy gets captured and the data gets retained in here and in here and also in two muscles in specific, your psoas and your iliacus, right? Or your iliopsoas muscle. Now, why is this important? Because this is important because this is exactly where along your, your, um, your chakra points, right? If you call this your pituitary, your pineal gland, your, your thyroid, your thymus, inferior mesenteric gland, uh, superior mesenteric gland, and your gonads, these energy sensors then get blocked, okay? So when I'm looking at someone and I'm speaking to them, I'm now noticing what their dialogue is. When I notice what their dialogue is and I notice what their experiences were, I can then pinpoint, kind of like how you do, I can pinpoint, okay, this is something that was related to an emotional loving thing, or this was something that was in the physical world. This was maybe like, uh, you know, if someone, for example, experiences like, like a rape or scarcity, or like me in particular, like I was homeless as a kid. So the brain starts to register oh, wow, I have to be very careful. There's not enough of, there's not enough this. There's not enough money. There's not enough currency in the world. And because there's not enough currency in the world, then I'm not entitled to having more. Mm -hmm. And then that prevents us from getting abundance. We know that that's not true. That's an absolute fabrication. That's a lie from the matrix, from the elite. But we know that on a deep level, we deserve more. Mm -hmm. We know that. We want that. And that's why we're actively seeking that guidance. So when I'm working with a client, I look at that, I, I pay attention to all their verbal cues, and then I take them through a guided sequence to then get them from, from where they think that lack or that, that scarcity issue stems from and bringing it down to a deeper level, like to the super subconscious where the memory first began and then how to make peace with that, right? Because as, as we journey along and as I've, I've grown to, to work with more people and just like experiencing more stuff, I've seen that everything that we experience is there to serve us. Mm -hmm. So it also, in a weird way, it's like we have to make peace with it in its own way, even if we hate it at the moment, to right. then be able to move from the scarcity making peace with, okay, this is what I was before. This is how I registered things before. Now let me move into a different frame of being into the abundance mindset, into the abundance feeling. Exactly. So when I, and when I work with clients, then it's very similar. We talk about well, where are we at now? And then through like reading their aura, whether or not I'm even looking at them, right? I'm picking up on their aura and you can usually find a, a poverty mentality typically resides either in your solar plexus chakra or your sacral chakra. That's usually where the block is. So for me, I wasn't homeless as a child. However, my father was so controlling over everything that then what happened and money, it was always about money. It was because I'm the breadwinner, then I get to make the rules. Because I'm the breadwinner, you have to do this. Because I put food on the table, you have to do that. So for me, money equaled control. So I was never going to allow anyone in my relationships to make more money than me. Mm. But 
by the same token, because I was always beholden to him for that, from my very necessities, then I felt that I needed to go above and beyond and I was never worthy of having abundance because my very father kept saying, you're not worthy of me spending this money on you and I'm going to control you in this way. So that injured my sacral chakra where you feel that um, love, affection, safety, all of that that you should feel from your parents and then that injured and blocked my solar plexus or my power chakra because I felt I had no power in any of those situations because wow. as a child, I didn't. Wow. So there's so many different ways that these, those particular chakras especially can get the block and can get the injury so that now the heart can't emote because the heart's too busy just trying to survive. The heart can't do anything. We're just in constant primal survival mode, always. So, always. So, we never want to leave somebody in a situation where, okay, what are we? What can we do? So, I want to talk about some very, um, some of the basic ways that we can go through and begin to heal, and remove some of those blocks. Just some basic tools that one can. Um, utilize. I use meditation a lot and affirmations. I know that on your channel, you have a lot of affirmations and, and some guided meditations about that. So do you want to talk about your methodology of that meditation and the affirmations as well? Absolutely. So um, it's interesting because I actually just finished up a video where I was talking about how do we remove like negative people from our lives? Because uh, I've been getting that question up a lot. And I guess the best way to put it is in order for you to let go of the memory that the limbic system registers so that your body can now move out of, let's say, whatever the traumatic experience was in 1999 to like now being you at 2019, you have to become aware of thoughts. So you're, you are energy, okay? And as I mentioned this before in one of my videos, activating your heart's electromagnetic field, the heart. Uh, scientifically proven and measured, has um, the highest electromagnetic uh, frequency throughout your entire body. Mm -hmm. So if, like you said before, if let's say the energy of the root sacral or solar plexus chakra is blocked because of a traumatic experience that happened in 1999, you are now not able to push the energy up from, mm -hmm. from from the Taurus, right? The energy now stays blocked. And now it, it has no way to, to move up, right? It has no way to move through that Taurus field. So when you have this energy blockage right here, your, your thoughts or your brain can now not rewire. So what I do with my clients or the, the simple thing that I do basically is I get people into a lower brainwave state. And like you said before, that's something that I do with meditation or affirmation. And another technique that I use that I, I definitely like now is emotional freedom technique tapping. Now, some research has said that this is placebo, but I would suggest that it's not mm -hmm. because, hey, even if it is placebo, it still helps me on some level. <laughs> and it also helps other people too, so I really don't care. All right. But the idea here is that we have... Um, you know, as, as some people may know, we have veins, arteries, and we have uh, nerve cells, right? So the conductors, axons, dendrites, the things that allow us to move our body. Within those, we have energy centers, and they are called meridians in Eastern medicine, right? Mm -hmm. So like with um, acupuncture. Mm -hmm. Meridians, where these points in our body is where energy gets stored and where energy gets blocked. Mm -hmm. So our job now is to relive the memory even if it's painful and then to tap on it to release the energy so that now whatever blockage happened at the solar plexus or the sacral or the root chakra can then start to go back up and then flow because we are a Taurus. yes and and then on uh, for me when in my practice what i do with my clients is so similar you never i've never heard you explain it that way is that we do sit we get into our meditative state and we do sit 
in that pain, you allow the memory to come up, allow it to be real for you again. And it doesn't matter if you're sobbing or yelling or whatever it is, you just allow it to happen. But look at that from an outside view and then say, I forgive myself for allowing myself to be in this position and I forgive the other person for putting me or inflicting that pain. And that repetitive in my, and that's kind of like the essence of Reiki energy healing is just allowing the universal life force to flow through you and allow it to heal in every area and move all the blocks. So two, two different methodologies, but they are both based on the same thing is that we've got to not be afraid to live that memory again. We can't be afraid of the energy that comes up. We can't be afraid of the memory because we got to rewire that brain. And I just, I've got a playlist that we, I just did a series of the language of the law of attraction that talks a lot about that. It's a three part series. And we talk about that as well as our seven day meditation challenge to get you in the habit of meditating. But we talk a lot in that law of attraction about attracting and releasing and what that language looks like. And really the language is love, right? Go ahead, Gabriel. Yeah, thank you. Um, so actually to, to bring a really clear example um, for you guys is yesterday. So I'm, I'm in Cusco, Peru. Like I'm, I'm gearing up for, for my next, um, my yearly follow-up with ayahuasca um, because that's what she was telling me to do like last year, like, hey, come back here every year or whatever. But anyway, I'm here in Cusco and um, Hema, uh, she wants to pet an alpaca, right? So we have like keychains and like alpacas. You can see that. It's pretty cool. But uh, when I took the photos of the alpacas with like the owner of the alpaca or whatever, I gave her all my solace, all my change, right? And then she was speaking to me in Spanish. She was like, uh, this is not enough. But she didn't necessarily say that, right? And then for me, I got really pissed off at that because I couldn't tell you why. I couldn't tell you why until last night when I was, I was like actually like really frustrated about it. And like throughout my day, like I was getting very agitated, like walking around a lot, but I sat down and I asked myself, all right, where is this coming from? Why am I still agitated by this? Where is this really coming from? And the next thing I know, I started to cry. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, whatever, like I cried. Right. And I realized, wait a second, I remember there was something that she said that stuck with me. She said, you don't have more. And I said, that's all I have. And then I realized, wait a second, there's something behind that. Mm -hmm. And then I started to meditate deeper into it. I started to breathe deeper into that. Mm -hmm. And more tears started coming up. And it was because I felt I wasn't enough. Yes. I, felt that, I felt that what I had to give wasn't good enough because I gave this person everything that I had and it wasn't enough. It wasn't that the person needed more money. It was just how I reacted, how I felt in the situation. Mm -hmm. And I thought that I had cleared that not enoughness before, but when I was going through that experience, and again, sometimes it sucks. Sometimes it's very painful. Yeah. It's very painful to relive a, a memory where, you know, you were either beaten or picked on. Like I was, I was bullied as a kid. I was made fun of you know, for having holes in my clothes when I was homeless, you know, walking to school with no jacket, having holes in my shoes, getting wet, getting sick, getting cold. And all those things came up, all those little memories came up like, damn, you're not enough. You're not good enough. Who's going to love you? You know? Mm -hmm. And when you start to address that pain, yes, it's extremely painful. Don't get me wrong. Like this is why people, and this is, again, this is what I realized about people. This is why people engage in alcohol. This is why people try to numb their pain. This is why people try to escape and not necessarily deal with the issue. They dance around the hot cake because it's painful. Right. So what I tell them to do is like, hey, you have to breathe into this. You have to sit with it. It's not real. Right. It's not an illusion. It's a past memory. It's just something that the brain captured that now you're registering the, the emotional body from. So now your job is to go from this brainwave state to a more relaxed brainwave state. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned in some of my videos, and even in the past video, just from this example right here, most people operate in this beta 
beta brainwave state right here, right? Mm -hmm. And the beta brainwave state operates at 12 to 30 hertz uh, frequency. So that means it's always active, right? If you ever seen people that are always fidgety and they just don't seem like relaxed, it's because they're in a higher beta brainwave state. Mm -hmm. That's where you'll find anxiety, depression, um, doubt, worry, mm -hmm. all those things. But in an alpha state, when you meditate, especially, mm -hmm. is when you get into a much more calmer uh, state of being. And the interesting thing about what you just mentioned, Lisa, too, about forgiveness, is that forgiveness has actually been linked to elevating alpha brainwave states. So the more that you can actually forgive, even if it's difficult, the more that you can actually forgive a shitty situation or experience that you had, is the more that you can raise your alpha brainwave state to then move away from the emotional body that happened in 1998 and then bring yourself into the right here and right now in this emotional body. Exactly. And the forgiveness, it's, it's so beautiful because you get the science behind the spirit, right? So the forgiveness mentality and just the forgiveness of life, the life of forgiveness, what that does by calming what I hear, it calms that beta brain. So now the beta brain is not uh, in control. You now are, you have the third dimensional being in its proper place so that your multidimensional infinite being can truly lead you. Because if this is constantly going, you're not listening to your spirit. Your spirit, you can, it can, because it's a small, still voice. It's not going to shout. It's not going to take over. You have to knowingly allow yourself to be led by your true self and not by this character that's been put upon you or that you're living here in this simulation, in this matrix, in this human experience. So calming that uh, beta brain down then allows your spirit to truly commune on a constant basis and you can be led by it into your most excellent life. I think it's beautiful. Absolutely right. That's absolutely right. And when it comes to um, to healing, right, um, it's all about just maintaining a more calmer state of being, state of presence, and um, addressing what the issue is. So getting back to like the whole thing with this video, if let's say you are consciously wanting abundance, but yet you're programmed subconsciously to still experience lack. You have to now raise that memory or that experience or whatever it is that that belief system about the lack, bring it up, release it, whether it be through crying, whether it be through EFT tapping, meditating, affirmations, and then rewire. And that's right. why, uh, that's why I, I said, said in some of my videos, um, neurosynaptic rewiring, right? So dealing with the nerve cells, right. dealing with the nervous system and rewiring the synapses in the brain. And this right. is something that I've, I'll be studying when I do my doctorate in metaphysics is to find a way to trigger, to get the memory out as quickly as possible mm -hmm. to then a transformation as quick as we can. Because yes. some people, it takes, it takes years. Sometimes some people never even um, experience the opposite in this life. They, they always stay stuck with that emotional body. And then that karma then translates into another life. Right. And then work on it again in some other life. Right. Right. But if you can get into this habit, the first few times you get into the habit, you're doing this work, it's, you know, it's, it's hard. But now it just comes naturally and it's okay to feel the pain. You're not going to die from it. You're not going to die from it. You're going to be okay. And th just learning that there are always new layers to uncover that I think keeps us in our humanity and it's okay to keep uncovering those layers as you're trying to fix your life. We're going to wrap this up. This has been amazing. Um, thank you very much. Um, Gabriel and I, we're going to have some information below on how to reach us because we're going to do a webinar very soon, a live webinar where you guys can come in and get some, some real good in-depth tips and tools. We'll be doing that very soon and we'll put that information down below. Gabriel, again, thank you for being with us with, for this series. I so appreciate you so much. And guys, um, thank you again for being here. As always, peace, love,
blessings and joy be unto you today, tomorrow, and for all eternity. And oh, leave us plenty of comments down below. Tell us how this series has helped you. Tell us what's popped up. Tell us what's bubbled up. Tell us how you're going to implement all of this into your life. Until next time, we'll see you soon. I love you all. Namaste. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for joining us for How to Fix Your Life, the series. We want you to comment. Leave comments below. Let us know how this series has helped you. Let us know if you've tried um, EFT tapping, if you've tried meditation then, and how, what success you have found. We really do want to monitor and help you along your progress as you continue to fix your life. Again, please consider liking and subscribing to Gabriel Inspires. The link to his YouTube channel is right there on his icon. And also, please consider liking and subscribing to Heart of Inspiration. And you can do so down below. Until we see each other again, peace, love, blessings, and joy be unto you today, tomorrow, and for all eternity. Namaste, my friend. Bye-bye.